Welcome back to Breaking Waves Sailing, a channel about Ben and Allie and their adventures sailing the world in search of surf waves. After buying an 80s era sailboat and spending four years fixing her up and learning to sail around Vancouver Island, we are finally ready to take on the biggest ocean and sail all the way from Punta Mita, Mexico to French Polynesia. Make sure you hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on this adventure finally. of a lifetime. Down We're down. Welcome to the Doldrums, oh, yeah. a band of weather between the northern and southern trade wind systems. It's starting to get a little, a little scary looking out here, eh? Yeah, there's a big dark cloud right in front of us. The water is all dark is, looking. Yeah, the ocean is no longer that pretty color of blue that it was. It's like this like steely, ominous gray. It's like Pacific Northwest in the wintertime. Just got some rain, some piped up winds. Squad is coming. Somebody got a map. <laughs> Did you sleep? Yeah. My preconceived idea of the doldrums was that it was a band of no wind, where sailors bobbed around in the glassy sea state, going out of their minds with boredom in the sunshine. Fresh water. What we got instead, however, was humidity, squalls, lightning, torrential downpour one moment, and sun the next. And while the sea state remained calm, Dodging angry clouds was keeping us on our toes. What you making? Sushi! Sushi! With the wall who you caught? See? Before everything went to shit today. Yeah. Remember that when we caught a fish? Remember that highlight? Just project for a Going into a squall. You doing alright? Yeah, I'm almost done. That's good. Good job. I think that one's gonna get us. I think it's moving our way faster than we're getting out of the way. Oh boy. Upon seeing my first flash of lightning, I put all of our electronics in the oven. Overkill? I don't know, but I was happy that they were there. The nice thing about having some surfboards in your berth is that when you're healed way the heck over and you're trying to go to bed, you can just lean up against them and kind of wedge yourself in there. <coughs> I highly recommend a good pair of noise cancelling earbuds, like the Apple ones. They help immensely when you're trying to sleep. On a noisy boat, they just drown out all the noise and forget where you are. Curl up against your surfboard and just have a nice little snooze. Ah, good night, y'all. All right, guys, we are going through our first squall tonight. Um, we are at 8.122 coordinates um, and we have about 17 to 20 knots at 120 degrees on our port side. We're going about 5.7 speed over ground. Um, the radar is lit up because <laughs> we're threading the needle between two squalls right now. Um, yeah, so here's to our first Squall. And I mean, first time at anything is scary, right? But tomorrow maybe it'll be like, oh, another squall, whatever. So that's where we are now. Wish us luck. And the squall did hit. It came fast and it came hard, with sustained 25 knots and gusts to 35. The raindrops were the size of ping pong balls and hit the ocean with such force that it sprayed up a foot in the air, causing spray that came at you from all angles. We had a reef in the main and the jib out only a sliver, but as we climbed past 20 knots, I called for Ben to wake up and support me. He made it into the cockpit in the exact moment that our autopilot overloaded and he took the helm. It took everything we had and Kiana had to keep the wind on the port side. At this strength of wind, an accidental jibe would be costly. Sorry, you just survived your first squall. Barely. 
really. How was that? That was wild. Allie got me out of bed. And like five seconds before it hit. We just, yeah, we were just about to get walloped. And in a squall, and your main goal is just to go over the helm, autopilot, and trip the wind on the side of the boat that you've got your sails trip for. You don't want to accidentally jive or hack or anything. You break the boat like that. And honestly, everything that happened to me, two hands on the wheel like this, or I don't know how long that was. Three minutes? At least three minutes of like complete focus. We were ripping around. I felt like I felt like John was like an F one Formula One race car, like like super turbocharged. It was nuts. It was nuts. I was scared shitless to be honest. But we got through. I wasn't able to put my life jacket on. I couldn't take my hand off the wheel. Even for like a split second, it would have been enough to overpower the boat one way or the other. It would have broken the boat. We had we had a reef in the main and we had the head sail fairly heavily reefed. Now we've got second reef in the main and almost nothing out on the Genoa. Because we're not doing that shit again. That was wild. So it was more like more just really strong winds that would cause the bow to want to like right now. It's going over to a beam reach on me. It's not so much shifty as it is just really strong winds and we were just getting hit by waves and just really hard to keep the wind where it needs to be. Honestly, right now, I think autopilot would do a better job than me because it's lighter. Uh, the reef, honestly, the second reef from the main is everything. I can't believe we went into that last fall with only one reef. That was just straight to God. Like it was an F1 Formula One race car track. Just gnarly. And just as quickly as it arrived, it was gone. Hey, good morning, guys. We survived the night, barely, <laughs> but we did. Uh, we thought we were kind of through the squally zone and then apparently they're back, but nothing we can't handle now that we're veterans of the squall system. I got a little bit of sleep. I'm definitely getting to the point of like sleep deprivation. I don't feel, I got enough sleep just now, but I feel good again. So yeah, expecting that you know, one or two more squalls max, and then we're probably, based on what Bill's doing in front of us, we're probably motoring for a full day. We'll have no wind. Um, which is fine by me. That's also a good opportunity to catch up on sleep. So, I, I think it's raining enough now to have a shower. Water now, baby. Whew, man. I am showered. I'm fresh as a daisy. <laughs> I was right, though. After the first one hit, they all seemed a lot less scary. We stayed heavily reefed anyway after learning how fast the squall could come and go. And while we still got the odd gust to 25, nothing really hit us quite as hard as that first one. here it's like humid so I'm just sweating but then the wind blows like 20 knots and you're kind of like ah I'm just like constantly sweating um, what's up tonight there sugar plum it's the beach yay it's the beach the wahoo so Allie and I are both kind of feeling under the weather now it's like I never got over my cold and it's back on again here back to me and Allie's also feeling sick now, so not much we can do about it. We're taking our vitamins and drinking lots of water and trying to sleep as much as we can, but hopefully by the time we're back in the Southern Trades, we can both be feeling top notch again. That'd be nice. But if there's a time to be sick, it's today. This has been a pretty chill, mostly motoring day. It's nice to sort of not have to do the sailing stuff. I mean, we're motor sailing, but uh, yeah, it's been a chill, sort of like not think too much day as we're working through some lighter winds and trying to get out of the ITCZ. I think we'll still hit, we're at like 6, six north, 36 minutes. So we're still probably going to hit a few more squalls. I think as we get 
a little further south here. Um, but yeah, happy to be kind of motoring out of this area and back into the trades. We got about just under 200 miles to go. So got lots of fuel. I figured out how to get the forward fuel tank to not only bring fuel forward, but then when the fuel return comes back to the aft tanks, um, I just run one of the two tanks and I fill I fill it up, so I don't have to like pump it anymore to get the aft tanks full. So that was a good little figure out. So yeah, with that tank in action, we got lots of fuel. We could probably go even a little faster, but I'm trying to be a little bit conservative. You never know. You never know. We actually, right now, we actually have pretty good wind. We are sailing, but I don't think this is gonna last a whole lot longer. So I think the program right now is just get the hell out of the ITCZ. Yeah, man, it's a, it's a jungle in here. Get me out of this place. Welcome to the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. Who back for games? So we're like basically halfway there right now. Uh, we get to look forward to crossing the equator. Cool and the southeast trades are hopefully going to be nice and full but planning to actually remove the starlink from its mount and stow it it's been too tempting to go on every day and go on instagram and post stuff and look at the news and look at the leaf scores and talk to our buddy boats on whatsapp and decided that the second half of this we're just going to fully disconnect and just use the iridium as our uh, weather and the way that we update the predict wind tracker. So that's the plan. Looking forward to that too. But I'm going to wait until Saturday when we're out of the ITCZ and I need to check game four, Leafs Bruins, before I can actually sign off. Okay. Naturally. Some of our last produce, eh? Yeah, I'm impressed though with the stuff that did last. Like yeah, cucumbers, cucumber looks great. Cucumbers lasted, which I was not expecting. Carrots. Apples, tomatoes. The tomatoes lasted longer than I thought they would. Yeah, and even avocados. I found this at the bottom and I was like, that looks like it's in perfect shape. Well, it looks like it's in perfect shape. It's in perfect shape. It's trying to lose her mind a bit. I can't do anything because I get sick like pretty easily. I thought you were kind of over that on this trip. I've just been taking a lot of meds. Mm -hmm. You haven't stopped taking them? Pardon? You haven't stopped taking seasickness? Uh, I sometimes stop and then as soon as I start feeling it come back and take it again. Mm. So I'm taking them like as needed. But yeah, it kind of puts me in this position where I'm like, I feel like I can't do anything because it'll get me sick, but I'm also bored. So I'm just stuck in this weird zone of being bored and not doing anything. Here we are. I don't mind the boredom today. Kind of enjoying the boredom. The not having to do any sales stuff. My hands are all cut up yeah. from earlier events. My foot, my foot's healing on that Wahoo that got the last laugh on me. So yeah, I'm enjoying the recovery day, sleep and healing my, my wounds. If you've seen part one and part two of the crossing episodes, you'll remember that we installed our brand new code D sail and bowsprit about 12 hours before we left Mexico. Would I recommend that? Probably not because with any new project, there's a phase after installation where you work through the kinks. And on this passage, the code has come down and been put back up three separate times as we worked through the different kinks. It is 4.15 AM. Um, ben got me out of bed because we have seven knots of wind and normally that's not a reason to get excited about but uh, we needed light wind to put our code D back up um, and kind of figure it out and we didn't have any forecasted for the next until we arrive in Fatigiba so he hauled me out of bed and it took a little bit of practice or it took a couple of tries um, because there was a twist in not only our sail, because when we, we did eventually wrap it all up, it was bound pretty ugly. Um, and then second problem, so we took it down, we un we tried to unbound it just on deck, unbind. Guys, I'm so tired. Okay, unbind it on deck, which we succeeded, and then uh, put it back up. And still, it wasn't coming out all the way, um, but we figured it out. The control line was 
wrapped weird around the furler, which the pin came out of when we were in the chaos and, and the furler came off. So I don't know, I don't know, really know how it happened, but um, we sorted it out and look. So it was worth getting out of bed. Got a strike while the iron is hot. And uh, yeah, I don't think we're gonna have any light wind in the forecast, but I'm just so happy to have the sail back because if we do, we can catch up with Calico Skies and beat them to hell. We made it to the equator! <laughs> Shit. Slightly missed it. Well, that's all right, close enough. Happy equator crossing. For this occasion, I have written a poem. A toast! Is that fair enough to drink? A toast! Or should I say a barnacle? With a goal to be comical, some would say it's maniacal to sail all this way, to cross the equator two days before May. But here we stand, Skipper and his hand, at zero and zero, celebrating the fear, nay, the effort it took to get where we are. All the wishes on stars and even the moon for a god named Neptune. May he smile on us as we stand on the cusp and offer a drink to the sea. Woo. To Neptune, to Neptune. Ben and me. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Yay. What she said to Neptune. I haven't done this in a while. Forgot how to <laughs> forgot how to hold a drink. Cheers. Cheers. We have just determined that we are shellbacks. Forever henceforward. Woo! We are no longer polywogs. You. Cheers. First drink in over two weeks. Always fun on Kiana. This is our bad luck of three nut today. Yeah, true. Sure. At least it's already got it. I need light. Can you just tell the camera what's happening and then I'll give you light? I was cleaning the bathroom <laughs> and um, this is where like our valves and our seacocks are and I noticed there was like moisture down here so I threw a toilet paper and on the toilet paper it's just there's like a huge leak and I was like what the f is that? Pardon my language. Um, so our hot water pressurized hose cracked. It's like probably 40 years old but um, cracked and it was leaking pretty significantly. So I'm just, we, luckily we have a lot of extra spares, but I'm just replacing it. But I don't know how long it was leaking for. So that's our fresh water, but. No more showers until we get to landfill. So I have to keep a hand on this pressurized thing. Can you get this cap off, please? Cool, so I was able to get the old one off. Man, it's lucky we have so many spares. So I'm just popping the new one on. Metal bit. Compression fitting. Compression fitting. How come it's not as tight as the last one? I don't think it. Oh, yes, I'm gonna Matter? Crisis averted. Good call. Good find. Good fix. At least crushing it this passage on all the fixes. Day 12 on the ocean. I'm so proud of Kiana. I know her well by now. What every creak, bang, rattle is. But the most comfortable I've ever felt with her is the noises that I don't know and trusting that she's still okay. She's built strong. And I know the work that I've put into her also helped build her to be able to handle squalls and she takes them on like a champ. I feel relaxed and I hope to carry this feeling with me going forward. First sip of beer in how long? That's not my beer, that's your beer. I know, but you had a sip of beer. Uh, I don't know, I don't drink beer. <laughs> First drop of alcohol in how long? 21. I mean, I didn't drink really before either. I don't know. 
like a month. Long time. You're gonna be wasted off that zip. I probably am already drunk. <laughs> gonna be getting that from Benny Boy. Ew. Day 19 Etsy. I cannot believe it's been 19 days. Time does not make sense out here. We had light winds all day today. So light that we even rolled in our code and deployed the spinnaker. It's been a while since I've seen this sail. It did have a bit of a twist in it and the sock pulley at the top had a bind, but nothing we couldn't fix easily. We had it up all day and we are going five knots in six of true wind. How crazy. We're also flying it off of our bowsprit now and it is working so much better than it did before. Seas are calm and we had another beautiful sunset. 433 miles to go. Looking like we'll make landfall before sunset on Sunday. Wow, that is hard to wrap my head around. Make sure you guys hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's episode when we finally make landfall in Fatu Hiva, the Marquesan Islands of French Polynesia. And there are behind the scenes updates over on Patreon. See you next week. Ding!